Welcome to Web and Beyond Cast, where small business comes to learn about marketing and managing on the Web and Beyond with your host, Ray Sidney Smith. Welcome, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and community to episode 004, episode four, which is part three in our five part series for Web and Beyond Cast on how to build a website for your business. I'm Ray Sidney Smith, and so far, I've had a chance to chat with Ryan Cleland of W Street Design on the principles of good website design and development. I hosted Beth Lawton of Canoe Media Services, Stacey Morris of Focus Copywriter, and Tara M. Clapper of Express Writers, a panel on content writing specialists to discuss getting your content together for your website launch. And on today's show, I have a panel of web experts in a whole different paradigm for building a website completely using a website builder called Squarespace. Let's see what Squarespace is all about and if they're the right choice for your business website. But first, let me introduce you to my guests on Web and Beyondcast today. Originally from Germany, our first Squarespace expert panel member is Kerstin Martin, who has lived in four countries and traveled around the globe before settling down in the beautiful seaside town of Bellingham, Washington. Her professional background in the airline technology, finance, and education industries eventually led her to starting her own business in her early 50s as a Squarespace web designer and officially endorsed Squarespace authorized trainer. Kirsten specializes in designing professional websites for small business owners in only three days and also teaches popular online courses in Squarespace web design, SEO, and e-course hosting, as well as a business course on building a successful web business. Welcome to Web and Beyond Cast, Kirsten. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Our next Squarespace expert panelist is Paige Brunton, a Squarespace web design expert who helps creative entrepreneurs launch sites that connect and convert all in just two weeks. Paige's blog is the go-to destination for Squarespace info, helping thousands of Squarespace users every month. Her Start Your Squarespace Website Workbook is a popular free option for setting up the foundation of your Squarespace site. Paige earned a master's degree in the arts from the University of Mississippi. You'll find Paige traveling Europe and Asia, where she lives as a location-independent digital nomad. Welcome as well, Paige, to Web and Beyondcast. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. And last but not least, Brad Good is an officially endorsed Squarespace specialist, authorized trainer, and has been building sites on Squarespace since 2008. I didn't even know Squarespace was around in 2008. Um, he has helped hundreds of Squarespace customers with their websites. Brad started a web development company based in San Diego, California in 2015 that specializes in Squarespace and has built a team of 13 talented designers and developers. Welcome, Brad, to Web and Beyond Cast. Thank you very much. Excited to be here. Fantastic. Well, welcome all of you again. And so now on to Squarespace and the whole construct of website builders. Uh, obviously, they've been around for a while. I mean, back in the GeoCity days uh, that Yahoo eventually purchased and, and so on and so forth. But I wanted to first start off the conversation with there are other website builder platforms out there. There's Weebly and Wix and and many others out there. And you all have decided to set your sites on and use Squarespace, not only for your own website development businesses, but for your customers. And I was curious about what some of those benefits and, and disadvantages are are of using those platforms, comparing those against other website builders, but also against, say, WordPress or Drupal or Joomla or other kinds of self-hosted versions, which we'll talk about in future episodes. Like Brad, I've been using Squarespace since uh, 2008. Uh, still remember version 5, loved it, <laughs> and miss it still to a degree. And I've actually been designing websites just for my own pleasure since 1999. Uh, I started with just writing websites in HTML. And I became a blogger in 2005. I used WordPress for quite a few years, tried Joomla, hated that. <laughs> and so when Squarespace came out, you know, when I became aware of them in 2008, it was quite a revelation for me, actually, because I'd been using WordPress self-hosted. Now, I'm not a technical person, you know, I'm not a programmer. And I know just enough, you know, to, to do what I want to do. And so I'm entirely self-taught. And I do enjoy that to a degree, but WordPress, you know, just, just drove me crazy. And, um, you know, because you have to keep the up plugins updated. And I, I don't know, the backend management, uh, I, I really didn't like. 
So then Squarespace, uh, you know, came out and I looked at it and it was beautiful. You know, it had really, really nice designs, very nice templates. And uh, it was so easy to use, you know, the editor, I didn't need to use coding anymore. And so I, I just fell in love with it, you know, and then since then they've moved, you know, onto version seven. So I've been pretty much using just Squarespace for the last 10 years and uh, professionally for the last four years, you know, when I started designing for small businesses. I still love it, I have to say, and they keep improving all the time. So um, it's been a very good experience. Yeah, so I had a similar experience to Kirsten in that I, when I first got started, I did what everyone does and I went and compared every single website platform. So I used things like WordPress and I tried out Wix and Weebly um, and a few also Google Blogger at the time. And when I was using the different website platforms, WordPress, well, it could achieve everything that I wanted it to. I just found it so difficult. And when I would edit things in the back end and then go on to the front end, it just didn't look the way I wanted it to. And then I tried out some of the other like DIY, do-it-yourself sort of um, website building platforms like Wix and Weebly. With those ones I found, they weren't as customizable as I wanted them to be, but they were definitely easier to use. And so when I found Squarespace, I felt like it was sort of the perfect match in between exactly like what I wanted. Like it was powerful. I could do what I wanted. I could create what I thought of in my mind on the page, but it wasn't a technical nightmare. And so that is um, sort of what I see as why it's really can compete with the other platforms. I like the fact that Squarespace is a hosted application. The content owner doesn't really need to worry about upgrades, third-party plugin integrations, worrying about, example, WordPress being upgraded and then breaking plugins. A lot of other content systems rely on a lot of third-party things to make them work. Squarespace, I think, did a good job of kind of keeping the the reins on the whole application, keeping control of it, releasing updates throughout the whole product. And it allows the the content owners to really focus on the content and not trying to worry about the back end. Those are all legitimate arguments for Squarespace. And so this, this kind of leads me into the second part of the question and my next question. So I'm going to put those two together for you as we make our way on. I, I know you're all Squarespace experts and Squarespace advocates, but what are the disadvantages? What what are the what are the mealy little things that you don't like about Squarespace currently? I'm more curious in the sense of what makes Squarespace good, there are there are things that probably make Squarespace not the best for some audiences, for some business owners, where they may want to have more flexibility with the system and or things that Squarespace maybe doesn't do. I'm, I'm curious about your perspective on that and, uh, and, and who you think Squarespace is really best for. Squarespace has an e-commerce platform, but I find that if you get into many, many, many products, while it can handle that, it's not the great for the organization of them. So for example, if you go on Nordstrom.com, you notice that there's like dresses and then within dresses, they sort of break it down into day dresses or different types of dresses um, or same thing with pants. Whereas with Squarespace, just the navigation options, if you start getting into many, many, many products, like I'm talking hundreds of products, um, I find the organization isn't the best for that. So if you're going to be starting a website and the primary purpose is to build an online store that now or in the future is going to have maybe hundreds of products, I don't think it's the best platform. So I mean, like Shopify might make more sense. Yeah, I, I would actually uh, agree with that. I uh, literally just moved uh, one of my clients from Squarespace to Shopify for those reasons. And it's not just that it's harder to organize, you know, for the user, also in the back end. Um, the, if you have hundreds of products, it's really not that easy to, to organize for yourself as well, you know. And when I, like, I hadn't used Shopify before, so this was my first experience with that. And I thought, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, this, uh, you know, it allows you to filter your products and uh, in the back end as well and to do bulk updates. And, uh, you know, those things are not possible. What I do like in Squarespace is um, when you sell services uh, or digital products as well. I think it works very well for that. And it's a very nice, um, seamless process for the client. Physical products. Yeah, they, they can be tricky. Also, the shipping, I find, you know, the shipping has definitely limitations, you know, that you can't do product-specific shipping for um, rates, for instance. 
And uh, so I agree with Paige, you know, that the commerce platform um, has some limitations in that regard. One thing that I had a quick question on is the ability for you within the Squarespace e-commerce functionality. Are you capable of syndicating into Google's product feed for Google Shopping? I'm not sure about Google Shopping, but I know Instagram has been integrated. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 look it up and and put it in the show notes. You know, it's really important for you to be able to show up if you if you want to be found in Google Search in Google Shopping's channel. Uh, you know, you want to be able to syndicate into the Google Merchant Center. The commerce is definitely on the entry level of commerce, and I think it's a good starting point for a lot of businesses to evaluate if they can sell their product. Like what was mentioned is we've actually migrated a lot of Squarespace clients to Shopify. Once they've outgrown kind of their limitations, um, the internationalization of, of commerce is getting better. It was in English until, I don't know, six months ago only, but it's evolving and it is getting better. So we'll see what's on the horizon. I know that one thing people have a, a frequent question about is the migration process. All of you have brought that up already. What is the migration process like for people? How do people move from Squarespace to another platform when they learn that Squarespace perhaps doesn't fit their needs? It is honestly like building your website again, I would say. Um, so different content management systems, they've started doing things where you can say import and export products or um, blog posts or whatever. But if you do think about moving, I would really say that you're basically starting again from the beginning. You might have your content a little bit more prepared than you would like originally the first time you go to build a website. Um, but it is, do you think of it as like a whole new website build? Because it is definitely, it's pretty much what it is. <laughs> I would agree with that as well. Now you can, um, you know, export content from Squarespace. Um, so for instance, you can export your products into a, you know, CSV file, and then you import that into whatever um, contact management system you use or like Shopify. But even there, you will probably still have to go in and reformat things and and adjust it. And so like Paige says, it's it's pretty much like a new website. It is. There's a lot of evaluation of what needs to be migrated as well. If you're blogging as part of your commerce site, that is transferable, but all the site pages specifically aren't really transferable. So it is kind of redesigning, like everyone mentioned. And this goes back to the importance of choosing a platform up front that you believe you're going to be with for, for a while. Moving along, I, I wanted to, to turn the conversation over to the process you all take to bring your clients through to launching the site. Uh, Kirsten, you said that you you have a three-day process. Paige, you have a two-week process. Uh, Brad, I'm not quite sure, but I'm guessing yours is also probably some, some short period of time. And I know that from the clients that I've worked with who have launched websites, they can take sometimes much longer periods of time and much shorter periods of time based on how much content and the complexity of the site they're building. Can you each give me a general overview of what that process looks like as it relates to using a website builder as opposed to a another platform? So, yeah, so you mentioned that I have, uh, you know, the three day process now. Now, I didn't always do that. When I started out, it basically took as long as it took and I built more complex websites. But I found that for myself, I enjoy the shorter projects and but you have to be a specific client, you know, to, uh, you have to be very prepared as a client with your content and I help you, you know, so I basically, you know, I have a consultation call with my clients where we determine whether we're a good fit. And then um, I have a sequence of, you know, automated emails and uh, documents that are sent the clients and access to a Dropbox folder where they upload their content. So I help them as best as I can, you know, to get prepared and then they submit their content um, up to the day before we start. I basically do the design. I communicate with them throughout the three days and then hand off the website. And the way I do that is, and I know a lot of other designers do the same thing. I do video tutorials uh, so that it is specifically for their website and um, on how to update the website once I've handed it over to them. So. I'm finding, so I've only started this like a few months ago and every client I've worked with so far uh, doing the three day websites, I mean, they all loved it, you know, but it doesn't work for everyone. A lot of uh, clients have more complex needs and I, I assume that is what Brad does, for instance, as well. 
you know, because they have more pages, you know, they have maybe a shop, you maybe have to integrate more third party services, you know, so you don't really have plugins, but you can use third party services like Acuity scheduling, for instance. So the process can be a little bit different in that regard. Uh, so it really, you know, depends on the client. But I would say for a lot of small businesses, Squarespace is definitely a good choice. It's very easy also to maintain for them once the website has been designed, you know, and I, you know, for my process, I try to, I have a workflow. I use actually a, a, a 17 hats, you know, which is a, um, a ma client management system. And, you know, so contracts, everything is automated and, uh, and it works really well. You mentioned acuity scheduling. And for those of you who are listening, it's important that you know that Google has a project called Reserve with Google, and that is the ability for different businesses, different verticals right now. I think it's it's in the health and beauty space, fitness space, and you can then you can actually schedule appointments with a vendor, with a business, a local business, one that is on Google Maps directly through Google Maps. And because of that, integrating with these third party services like Kirsten was talking about is actually also another important choice. And so if you, I'll, I'll put a link to this in the show notes, but look at the reserve with Google partners that currently exist so that if you do launch a Squarespace website and you integrate and you, you want people to be able to book in your, your, your calendar for services that you render, you want to make sure that you are, you have the right tool that is syndicated into Google for that. So thank you for that, Kirsten. And 17 hats is awesome. It's a great program. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> Similar-ish to Kirsten's, but a bit longer. <laughs> um, so in the two-week process, I can do bigger websites for sure. So websites normally up to about 10 pages. And then I also sometimes, depending on the client, I'm doing um, brand design for them as well. So like logos and collateral items. And then potentially also some setup of some e-commerce or something like acuity scheduling for them as well. Um, so how the process works for me is, again, I do a consult call with the clients to determine if we're a good fit together. If we are a good fit, um, they book in their two-week time slot um, by signing a contract and paying a deposit. Um, and then from there, I send them a welcome document, which walks them through the whole process of preparing all the different content and completing some questionnaires um, and completing a Pinterest inspiration board as well. So we're really on the same page before we get started. Then in week one on Monday, um, we go through and um, do a one hour consultation call together, really just to make sure we're on the same page, um, to make sure that we are going in the right direction, um, and then also to pick a template for them. And then in week one, I actually go and build out the entire website for them. So um, all my clients have just as same as Kirsten. When you're doing a shorter timeline, it's important that all the content is prepared before you actually go to begin. Um, so all the content's prepared, I go through in week one and completely build out the whole website. Then on week one on Friday, I send them a link to the somewhat live website. It's live so they can see it, but not live so that the world can see it. And then from there, I invite them to give as many edits and revisions as they want. Um, so they just send me back normally like a Google Doc with a whole numbered list of the different things they'd like to see tweaked and changed. I complete those edits in 24 hours, send it back to them, and we basically just keep going through that process again and again um, of doing edits until we get it perfect. Um, and then um, on the week two on Friday, we do an hour and a half lesson and launch call as well. So that's where I'm on a screen shared video call with them. And then I go through and I show them the back end of their own website. So they fully understand how to update and edit things over time. Honestly, like the vast majority of my clients, once we've gone through that lesson, I also record the lesson. So if they forget how to do something, they can go back to the lesson. Um, and then from there, they are pretty confident to actually take over their website by themselves. Clients, they always ask me like, can I work with you in the future if I don't know how to do something? And they totally can. Um, they can hire me at an hourly rate if they need to in the future, but mostly they're pretty confident once they've had that lesson and how to update and edit things. So they're pretty self-sufficient actually by the time I hand it off. And I think that just speaks to how easy Squarespace is to use. Um, and that's why it's so possible for them to update it and feel confident with their website afterwards. Well, we follow very similar design principles as both of you. I really got my business started in, in customizations. I personally don't design a lot of sites. I do a lot of custom integrations. I work with a lot of design companies that businesses have hired. And now they have a, a Photoshop file of many, many pages. And 
they've decided Squarespace is appropriate. So my job is to implement that design. So a little bit different relationship, but I, I do have designers on my team and we do collaborate together. The process is very similar to understand the the style, uh, their competitors. Starting with a template really just kind of uh, streamlines the process rather than starting from scratch. Sometimes people want a design that's not that doesn't look like a template, but you can really do a lot starting with a template. Well, thank you all of you for for going through your process. I think that really helps people understand what the various stages of launching a site, even with a website builder, there is still a clear set of work that needs to be done by the business owner and by the designer. And you both obviously need to collaborate in order to make the website go live. I think many times people think, oh, well, I'm going to hire someone to, you know, do my website. And then they kind of, you know, wipe their hands of the issue and walk away. And, and really, I have to impress upon everybody the importance that this is a collaborative process. There's work on on everyone's part to really make a great website launch. So let's go on in the conversation to maybe some of the challenges that you find that when you when you have a client, you 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 know, you have your ideal framework for how you're going to work through your process with your clients, but there's still going to be hiccups. What do you feel like are the biggest business challenges or the biggest challenges that business owners face when they come up against launching a site? Well, I find it is actually what we have just mentioned and what you just um, summarized. Uh, it is often content. Um, I find that a lot of my clients, uh, they do actually struggle with getting their content together or they don't really have a vision of what they want, you know, um, I often, I mean, I usually ask them, you know, they get a questionnaire as well in the beginning. And, and, uh, one of the questions is, you know, send me, you know, three to five examples of other people's websites that you like, you know, so that I get a sense of, uh, you know, what their styling preferences are. But very often, um, I find at least with, uh, with some of the people that I work with, because I, I work with a lot of small brick and mortar businesses as well. They're not uh, necessarily very technical and, um, and they really, um, uh, and they just really don't know, you know, and they say, well, just make me something beautiful, you know, and, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I have to say, though, that I find, you know, for me, that is actually part of what I enjoy as well. And I actually feel that as a designer, I see it also as my responsibility to help them as best as I can in that respect, because that's why they hire me, because they don't really know um, always what they want. And um, so I work with them and, and I try and get as much information as I can. I also work with a copywriter that I recommend unless, you know, a client already has someone that they prefer to work with. So if they really don't know what to do with their content and how to write something, then I um, refer them to, um, to the person that I work with. And so they collaborate and um, then I know that I will get, you know, really good content but sometimes it also transpires, uh, you know, it, I often start with, with the design and just put in something so that people can actually see it. And once they can visualize it, once, once they actually see it on the page, then uh, it's like, ah, okay, this is what you want. This is what you need. You know, so it is very much a collaborative effort. Every now and then I will have a client who's super prepared and wonderful, you know, and, and, um, you know, but I find with most clients, uh, the content is, is probably most challenging for them. And, um, but, you know, we work through that together and, um, and then when you hand it off, you know, like Paige said earlier, um, the ease of use of Squarespace um, is, is, is a revelation to a lot of them as well. You know, although not all of them do that either. I mean, I have definitely some very technophobe, um, well, not technophobe, that's not a very nice word, but clients who, um, who are just, uh, you know, not that interested, you know, in, in learning the technical side of things and how to update a page and all of that, you know, so they, they just come back and uh, and then I do it for them, you know, on a maintenance agreement. 
Uh, but content, I find, is is probably the the biggest challenge. So I definitely agree with Kirsten. I think content is one of the biggest challenges for um, clients. Um, when you work with a web designer, all the tech and all the back end and everything is taken care of for you. So content's one of the last things that clients have to work with. Um, and it can be difficult because if you've never written anything for a website or gotten photos together, you don't really know what to do. And so um, I noticed for a lot of my clients that are running into the same roadblock issue of not really sure of what exactly do I put on the page. And then they see it the first version, they go, oh. So what I started doing was I run a course called Square Secrets, and it basically takes people through the process of building your own Squarespace website. Um, and in that course, I have page content planners. And at some point, I realized that it would be very useful for me to give these to my own clients. Um, so it basically is like a sort of guidelines of what you want on every single page and sort of walks you through the process of what to put where. Um, so I started actually giving that to my clients. And the other thing which I find I don't think clients realize how important it is, but we web designers definitely know how important it is, is really great photos. Um, if you have fabulous photos and you even you DIY your website, you'll probably have a pretty decent website. If you hire the most skilled web designer in the world and have the world's most terrible photos, it's still not going to look good. So the other thing, which is um, definitely on the client's end, um, is getting that content together. And that really can um, make a big difference to how well the website looks, um, looks and functions at the end of it, really. I agree with both of you. Photos and content are a challenge. Um, I do think it's kind of underestimated how much content drives the design of a site. There's a lot of considerations and in, in structure. And a lot of times a company will hire us to design something. And like you mentioned earlier, Ray, that they kind of want to wash their hands and, and just let us do our thing. But it is a collaborative process. And then there's typically multiple people on the other end making decisions about what makes sense. And it really draws out the, the timeline, but um, it's really content and just kind of understanding what they're trying to promote and sell. And I've had clients who are really misguided in their own business and kind of looking into them. We try to kind of reorient their, focus to what actually makes sense from a, from a client end. Um, oftentimes they're just so focused on what they're doing as a business and they're busy that they don't really have the the time and understanding of how the internet works and how people are going to be able to find them. So I think content is the big, big issue. And what is, so do, what do you recommend usually for clients to do? Do you recommend for them to write their content and pages up front for, for their main pages? Do you recommend for them to, to do some of that heavy lifting before they meet with you? Uh, for, the, for those who know what they want, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Brad, where they may have some misunderstandings of their business fundamentally, and, and that's something that I think takes more bespoke consultation. But for those who do know what they want, do do you really recommend that they do some of that work up front or do you recommend that they do it along the the process with you if a client i would suggest getting in touch with a web designer because getting in touch with a web designer is going to be the best way to figure out what exactly it is that you need um so get in touch talk to a few web designers that you're thinking of working with and ask them um very specifically like okay the clients um, who come out with the best websites, what are they doing in terms of content? Like, what do I need to know? And sort of guide me in what do I need to know about content for my website? Because I am happy to give recommendations, just like as many as I possibly can, um, because I want to be building fabulous websites. And if clients have great content, that makes my job a lot easier. Um, so I would say chat to a few web designers and get them to give you recommendations on exactly if they have some sort of resource that they can provide you, like page content planners, um, or if they have guidelines on photos. In my welcome package, it goes through those things, like guidelines on which photos you should be taking in. Um, if you where to get photos, if you haven't already had some done, um, you could buy stock photos, you could get professional photos taken, or you could DIY them yourself. Um, I would suggest really between the um, stock photography or professional photos, um, unless you are just an exceptionally skilled photographer, then that's great. Um, but yeah, otherwise, one of those two. Similar to to Paige and also Brad, you know, I provide a document uh, that outlines, you know, photos, uh, same thing, you know, where to get them, you know, listing stock photography websites, recommending that they get professional photos if they can. You know, I, I also do uh, a fair bit of photo editing myself. Um, all people have, my clients have also used my own photos. I have I have my own library. 
and um, because visuals um, alongside the the text content, as Paige mentioned earlier, are very, very important, especially with Squarespace. Squarespace is such a visual platform and um, and and it provides such amazing tools you know to really um, you know stand out visually and um, so that's really important. And so the clients, you know, I, I find, you know, also questionnaires really help clients, you know, if they're, even if they kind of have an idea of what they want, um, uh, providing them with a detailed questionnaire, you know, simple questions like, what are your favorite colors? You know, um, what kind of fonts do you like? You know, do you like script fonts or just really simple clean fonts? And, you know, give me other websites, like website examples and, um, so really helping them, you know, guide them um, towards what you need from them, you know, to create a, a website for them. I do think it's, we're in a good time period where there is a lot of online resources, stock photography, different libraries are popping up all over. But in terms of content specifically, I think it does depend on if it's a new business or an existing Existing may have an existing website and it may just kind of be a revamp of that content. Um, if it is a new business, just kind of evaluating their competition and then starting a dialogue with them that kind of a differentiates their product from their competitors. Um, but I'm sure these little outlines really are advantageous too for um, kind of descripting this whole design process. I heard all of you talk about the visual nature of Squarespace sites. And so I'm I'm curious to dig in here a little bit in the sense that you do work in a very visually niche industry, website development. You know, you're working as a creative and design professional, but also with other creative and design professionals. How does that affect your process working with Squarespace as a as a platform, as a piece of software, restricts your ability to do certain things appropriately? You know, it's not it's not for it's not a bad thing that it gives you structure. So how, how do you how do you work with that? Uh, you know, that is not only image, but also video content today being how important it is to online marketing, to digital marketing, and, and to and especially to small businesses who may not be very comfortable in the video space. What are what are some of the things that you use to accommodate people on a website builder like Squarespace? For me, this is actually part of the beauty of Squarespace because you have the templates, you know. So the templates are, you know, the predefined containers and um, and they have, you know, a lot of different templates that you can choose from. And um, so once you know, you know, what your client needs, some are, you know, some need more visuals than others, uh, then you can choose the appropriate template and then you basically um, customize it to uh, you know for that client and um so in many ways squarespace has already done a lot of the groundwork here you know so they have already so you already have your page structures you know kind of in place and certain effects you know for instance the uh, the parallax effect uh, that is very popular these days you know where you have like the the scrolling images um and also um embedding videos works very well with squarespace and um, so I actually find that, you know, having the templates um, takes a lot of the, you know, potential upfront work out of, out of it. Uh, so you literally just take that and then you just have to add your photos and your videos and, um, you know, and then you customize it appropriately. And to... Sorry to interject here, Kirsten, but um, just so that people are, who are listening, Squarespace provides the templates. They're built into the platform. Are you, You're only able to use the templates in Squarespace, not external ones. You you will see, like if you Google Squarespace templates, there are actually uh, you know many people nowadays who sell Squarespace templates. But what they actually do is they take one of the built-in templates and then they um, sell you the process on how to make it look a certain way, you know. So, so yes. So the templates are built in. So it's not like with WordPress where you can go out and you know buy a template from all the numerous um, you know providers. Uh, you have to use your basis is always one of the built-in templates. And Squarespace has like 
you know, like 10, 15 template families. And then within those families, they have different designs. And um, uh, and I actually, as a designer, I only work with two or three templates most of the time. And um, because the clients that come to us, they don't really care that much, you know, oh, do you use Brine or do you use Bedford? You know, they, they don't care about that technicality. Uh, they just care about how it looks. But they're all always the built-in templates. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. I've linked to the Squarespace templates in the show notes. So for those of you who are listening, you can hop right over there and, and jump over to the Squarespace templates page. When it comes to content on your website, so video, text, photos, whatever, um, the build of your website is really the way to correctly do it, I should say, um, is to let the content of your website determine the layout and flow and everything of your website. So when it comes to me building websites, I actually delete every single thing off the template and just start from nothing pretty much. So you can just delete all the pages and then um, you let the content for your website guide what goes where as opposed to you fitting your content into some template which already exists. So when it comes to photos, you definitely want... um, Generally, if you're working with a photographer or taking them yourself or buying stock photos, you want photos that make sense um, horizontally or that are taken horizontally. Um, A lot of vertical photos you'll notice on websites. It depends on if people are looking at it on desktop or on mobile. Um, But for the most part, you really want photos that work well horizontally. Um, It's also good to have photos which have um, you kind of, in a way, I would say like photos of nothing, like having banner images or things that are just sort of like um, not really in the forefront of um, the importance of a section of your page, but are just there to sort of add visual interest. Um, So like backgrounds for banner images, Um, they don't actually need to be very busy, um, but you just want photos that sort of have sort of the look, the style, the vibe, the colors that you want to sort of guide your website. Um, And horizontal photos, you generally need a few more of those. If you're having like an about page photo, that would make sense vertically. But for most of the images, they're going to be used as banner images. So you want them to be, um, especially if you're going to be putting text or anything over top of the images of your banner images. You don't want the images to be too busy. You actually want them to be a little bit more like toned down and calm, um, especially again, one other thing which I see sometimes is if the image has text in it, like say you, I don't know, take a photo of a book or something, it has um, text on it, and then you put text over top of that, it kind of looks messy. So you want um, very like clean images. <laughs> and by, by horizontal, you mean taking photographs in landscape as opposed to portrait. Yes, correct. I'm going to kind of piggyback on that comment. Desktop versus mobile makes a big difference in image presentation. And that's kind of what she's talking about, landscape versus portrait. Not all photos, even though they look great, work on both, we'll say, platforms. Desktop is usually a lot wider. Phones are narrower. Uh, Squarespace does a good job of kind of automating the optimization of images so they load quickly. Um but depending on the template you're using, it may crop the image in an inappropriate way. You can There is a tool to kind of recenter the focus, um, but I've written many scripts and tools to either adjust the cropping or uh, recently I worked on a, a yoga website and the designer that I worked with wanted completely different pictures for mobile and desktop. So I was able to hide and show the, that content area based on um, what device you were using. And it made the design look a lot better because the, the images were appropriate for, for each platform. Can, can you tell a little more for us, Brad, about Squarespace, how it holds up in the, the roster of, uh, you know, just out the box, its ability to be uh, properly search engine optimized and flexible for mobile load speed and uh, mobile responsiveness? So in the templates, there is in the background header information in the code. Um, I think Squarespace is doing a pretty good job of best practices overall with meta tags and um, data attributes throughout the templates and, and the content sections. And they're doing it in a way that really keeps it automatic. The content manager doesn't really need to worry about it. There are things to know and understand about the concepts to maximize the benefit, but kind of as a generic product, I guess, Squarespace is constantly evolving. Um, I mean, even in a blog, they offer AMP page 
for super fast loading uh, blog pages. So for for listeners, um, AMP is it stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages, and it's a it's a it's a program that Google has really pushed for being able to display content very very quick on mobile. Correct. Any image that's uploaded, it gets resized. Or there's versions of different sizes of the image. So if you're using a thumbnail, it's not going to load a, a really huge image. It's going to load a small image. Um, everything's compressed. All the scripts and CSS are um, bundled. So the HTTP requests really are minimized um, as much as possible throughout the application or throughout the website. Great. So they're doing a they're doing a competent job of of eking out speed and and format for users to be able to put out websites that are mobile responsive and fairly well optimized. So fo- people can basically focus on content. And I think I've heard you all say that pretty much from the go, which is that Squarespace really allows you to focus on the content. Correct. I will add one more thing. The content owners can get really heavy with images and video, which does affect loading speed and SEO and kind of everything. Um, so that is a thing that Squarespace can't really have a handle on is how much content images, all that page load total um, is on each page. But collectively, they're doing a really good job. Right. So it really behooves the the person who's creating the page by page content to remember that even if you uh, have a, a really great mobile responsive website, if you put dozens and dozens of photos on it, it's still going to weigh down the page. That's just a reality. Squarespace has a reputation of being a do-it-yourself or DIY platform. So I'm going to kind of softball this all to you and say, what's the value in paying one of you to work on a Squarespace website for me as a small business owner versus me going to squarespace.com, signing up and trying to do it myself? What, what, what are the real value propositions that each of you brings to the table to level up my website launch? This is a question that uh, that we get a lot as well. You know, people email you, well, you know, do I really need a designer? I would say Squarespace is definitely a great DIY platform for those people who are a little technically minded, um, who enjoy designing and... Um, you know, and who don't mind, you know, do doing the work, you know, because even though it's, you know, kind of an out of a box solution, or it's, you know, it, it advertises itself as that, you know, there is still work that you have to do. And, uh, and I would say, if you enjoy that process, if you enjoy, you know, learning, you know, because there's still a learning curve as well. Um, and if you enjoy that, then by all means, you know, have have a go at it yourself. And um, and there are many people, I dare say, many younger people as well. You know, the younger generations that they, you know they grew up with the internet. So um, I see though that in like the older, in quotation marks, you know, generations, you know, for them it's not always that easy, and uh, and and they just really. Um, you know, and and they often don't want to do it either, actually. You know, they say, well, you know, I know I could maybe do this or I have quite a few clients who have tried to do it and they just found, uh, oh, you know, domain, how do I connect my domain, for instance, you know, and and they just, you know, because then you have to go and update your DNS records and, and they don't understand that and they don't really understand how all of that works. And um, so there are quite a few stumbling blocks that they experience because it's not just a question of plugging in some content and add uploading some photos, which, by the way, should be uploaded, you know, in the correct size and uh, uh, format. And so there is quite a lot that goes into it. And, you know, and I think some business owners say, well, you know what, I don't really have the time. I don't have the inclination or the time to do this. You know, I... I'm running a business or I'm starting a business and trying to grow it. I want to focus on my business and on what I do best. So I'm going to hand off this, this part of it, you know, because this is really not my, uh, my strong point. And, um, so they go and, and find a designer. And from my experience, and I'm sure Brad and Paige would agree with that, 
uh, every client that I've worked with, they're like, oh my God, I'm so glad I did this. I'm so glad I hired you um, because you really um, took, I, I, a lot of people really stress over the web, uh, websites because it's such an important part of a business nowadays. And, and there's so much more that goes into it. You know, like I said, it's not just a question of pictures and text. You know, you have to check your SEO. You have to make sure, you know, to get into Google and, you know, that you get listed. And there are so many peripheral um, elements to designing a really good website, you know, where when people visit it, they get the information that they need about your business. They're able to contact you easily. They're able to find you. Um, so I think, you know, there's definitely a lot of value in handing all of that off to someone who is a professional in doing this. Yeah, I love what you said, Kirsten. I also have lots of recommend or uh, yeah, recommendations as well, I guess. Um, so one of the major benefits to hiring a web designer is they're going to really help you. Again, we talked about like the importance of content um, and sort of like knowing um, also related to content is knowing um, what Google does with your website in terms of SEO, how they're reading it um, affects how you should be creating your content. Um, and uploading their content to your website. So if you want someone to sort of advise you um, on those best practices for getting that content together um, and SEO, um, that's definitely going to be beneficial to have a web designer instead of spending hours Googling it yourself. Um, also, another reason is a lot of people, when they DIY a website, while it is totally possible, um, what they tend to do is they tend to find a template and then they plug their content into their existing layout. And a lot of everyone says like, I don't want my website to look like everyone else's website. But when you do that, it is true. Your website is probably going to look like everyone else's. Um, the other issue is that people go onto the templates page and they find a template, which sort of looks like their business. So there's a demo template, which shows a, um, a yoga studio as the demo content. And so then all the yoga studios choose that template. And then of course, you're, if you and another studio in your town both use Squarespace, you're probably choosing that template and your websites are going to look eerily similar to each other. Um, so it really is best to actually delete all the content um, out of the template and then start from scratch. Um, and most people, when they DIY their website, they don't know how to do that um, and how to really utilize the platform best. So they just use the demo content um, or just swap their content into those places. Um, the other thing is you might have an idea in your head of what you want to create um, or how exactly you want your website to look, which is fabulous. Um, but it can be very challenging if you're new to the platform to sort of know all the functionality in order to make that happen. Um, and so a designer, they know the platform backwards and forwards. If someone shows me, I want this, I can say very specifically like, yes, that's possible. Or if it's not, it's not often, but in now and again, there is situations where we can't do something. Um, maybe they're showing an example of a website that's not Squarespace and there's one function which isn't possible. Um, so if you want to have exactly what you want in your mind created on a page, a designer is really gonna help you do that because they'll know how to do it or they'll know that it's not possible. And so they, they can give different recommendations. And then the last thing I would say is if you're a business owner, I'm a business owner, um, there's some things that I'm great at and others that I'm terrible at and I just don't want to spend any time on. And so if your focus is on just on running your business and you have 99 other things going on and you don't want to become a web design expert, then it's definitely... Um, a lot of my clients, what they say is, I just don't want to. Like this says, I don't want to become a web design expert. I don't want to spend hours doing this. I just want to focus on my business and have someone who knows what they're doing do this for me. And so that's one of the major benefits is you just get to hand over your content and then give some feedback and then that's all you have to do. So, yeah. I'll say too that um, budget affects this decision a little bit as the DIY. And like both of you mentioned understanding the features and limitations of the of Squarespace kind of drives either the template or even using Squarespace collectively um, to move forward. And I think hiring an expert to help evaluate the templates and the product can definitely save time overall. Um, there is kind of a lot of hidden little SEO components. And if you're having a website and you want to be found on the internet, those are definitely driving factors. Um, I know uh, I work with a lot of DIY clients that are 80, 90% done. And then they kind of raise their hand and need some help and evaluating their website. They haven't named images appropriately. All the, the uh, site description information is empty. 
Um, there's a lot of things to kind of understand, and a lot of these people don't have time to learn the system. So it really is best to to hire someone who does this on a day-to-day basis. I really appreciate those points for hiring a design professional like you all for uh, implementing a website on Squarespace or any other website builder for that matter. I meet with approximately 50 to 100 new you know business owners on a monthly basis and many times it you know requires us to pull up their website to talk about their digital marketing and in honesty those websites typically uh, don't look very great and i'm i'm a much bigger function over form person so it doesn't necessarily harm my aesthetic <laughs> sensibilities when i think about a website that doesn't look good but i know how important it is that even if if function is over form form is still highly important in the sense that it should at least be competent. So for those of you who are listening, your design aesthetic, your visual uh, taste may not be that of your target audience. So you have to really take to heart the fact that your your taste may not be good for your business in in terms of choosing that. And by having an outside third-party look at your website who is skilled and who works with a lot of websites, that really helps. That's That's a value you can't not incorporate into your business. So you really need to think about having someone look at it, even even if you you think, oh, well, you know, I could do DIY this myself and and it's going to be fine. It's going to save me a whole bunch of money. But the reality is, is that how much money are you going to leave on the table by having a site that when your target market shows up to it, they leave it because they they don't find it to be appealing. They don't find it to be laid out the way that you really uh, would want it to be for them to want to buy from you. So just just take that to to heart because at the end of the day, your website is so much of of your the first impression of people's, you know, finding out and learning about your business and you want that to be a good first impression. I'm going to give a little bit of encouragement. I know that websites can be an overwhelming and confusing topic. Um, but once you finish this, I've talked to people who have been meaning to do their website or redo their website for years. Um, but once you do this, it's going to be the most fabulous relief. You are, your business your business will start marketing itself as opposed to you having to hit the pavement um, doing this yourself. And you'll also feel so much more confident in your business. So while it is a big task, I do encourage you not to drag it out for forever, um, but to really... Um, handle it head on because once you finish this, you're going to be so much more capable um, of marketing your business in the future and so much more confident. And that's going to do really good things for your business. I think that Squarespace is a great platform for many small and large businesses, but understanding the limitations is important before investing the time and a product that may not work for your business. So going back to the last question, it is helpful to understand and evaluate the whole big picture of what your business does, what the web platform is able to offer, and just make a decision based on kind of those facts. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all so much for this content. I think this will really help people who are in the process of of looking at their websites and deciding, you know, do I need to revamp, refresh, relaunch my website? Or if it's a new entrepreneur and they're thinking about Uh, getting their business on the web. Uh, Currently, uh, roughly half of all businesses in the United States, at least, still don't have a website. Uh, And so um, if you're listening to this and you don't have a website, uh, listen to Paige. Uh, You know, you can do this and it will be a remarkably wonderful addition to marketing your business. Um, How can folks find you? So actually, a very easy way to find all three of us is to just Google Squarespace Web Designer, because all three of us are on page one. (laughs) So, um, but uh, to go to uh, my website, uh, so it's basically just my name, kirstenmartin.com, and Kirsten is spelled K-E-R-S-T-I-N, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, dot com. And there you will have all the information on, uh, you know, my web design services. And I also offer online courses in Squarespace as well for those, uh, you know, who do actually want to go down the DIY route. Um, So all the information is on my website. Yep. So my website is pagebrunton.com. Also my name. So P-A-I-G-E-B-R-U-N-T-O-N.com. 
Um, and I also run an online course. Again, like Kirsten, if you want to go the DIY route then um, and you want the knowledge on how to do that correctly, um, you can find that at squaresecrets.com, S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-E-C-R-E-T-S.com. You can find me in both of those places. And my website is my name as well, bradgood.net, B-R-A-D-G-O-O-D.net. On there, you'll find kind of an overview of my business, what we do. There's a really simple contact us question at the bottom that funnels right into my project management system where we can kind of evaluate the type of request that's coming in. And uh, we can get the appropriate team members kind of associated if it's a design or a custom implementation. But all of that is through my website, bradgood.net. Well, thank you all. Thank you so much for joining me here and providing your insights about Squarespace to our small business audience. This closes out another episode of Web and Beyond Cast, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and community. I really found our expert panelists' insights into the website builder platform Squarespace helpful, and I hope you did too. In the next show, I'll be bringing another expert panel discussion on website content management system, or CMS, known as WordPress. We talked a little uh, dirt about them today uh, in contrast to Squarespace. Uh, It's a big beast of a topic, and I'm looking forward to sharing this episode with you. And I'm looking forward to hearing back from you regarding your questions and thoughts on Squarespace as well as WordPress. Uh, As most of you know, I'm really passionate about WordPress and love sharing how WordPress can help small business, but of course, I am more than happy to talk about Squarespace, Shopify, Wix, Weebly, you name it. Um, If you have questions or comments, please go to webandbeyondcast.com forward slash contact. We'll answer them here on Web and Beyond Cast, and we may even make a show out of your suggested topics. So always happy to take suggestions. Uh, Please subscribe via your favorite podcast app. Review us on iTunes or Google Play or wherever you listen to the podcast. Uh, That helps us grow our small business community here on Web and Beyond Cast. So thank you. Thank you for listening to Web and Beyond podcast where small business comes to learn about marketing and managing on the web and beyond. I'm your host, Ray Sidney Smith. Until next time, here's to your small business success on the web and beyond.